Hello everyone, it's Ranger at 64 and welcome back to another League of Legends lore reading video. Today, we'll be finishing off Victor's lore by reading his color story. House on Emberfield Alley by Ryla Hyde Victor's third arm emitted a thin ray of light that welded metal into his left arm with steady precision. The smell of burning flesh no longer bothered him, nor did the sight of his left wrist splayed open, veins and sinew muscle fused with mechanical augments. He did not wince. Instead, he felt a sense of achievement gazing at the seamless blend of synthetic and organic materials. The sound of children shouting gave Victor pause. Rarely did anyone venture down the fog-bound confines of Emberfield Alley. He had chosen this location for that very reason. He preferred not to be interrupted. Keeping his left arm immobile, Victor adjusted a silver dial on his irodoscope. The device contained a series of mirrored lenses that angled light to allow him full view of the street outside his laboratory. Several children were violently shoving a malnourished boy towards Victor's wrought iron gates. I doubt Naf will last a minute in there, said a girl with imitation gemstones embedded above her eyes. I bet he comes back with a brass head, said a boy with a shock of red hair. Maybe then, his brain won't be as dull as the gray. You better return with something we can sell, or we'll be the ones to give you a new head, said the largest one, grabbing the small boy by the neck and forcing him forward. The other children backed away, watching. The young boy trembled as he approached the towering gate, which screeched as he pushed it open. He passed the front door and crusted with interlocking gears and shimed through an open window. An alarm blared as he fell to the floor. Victor sighed and pressed a switch that quieted the ringing. The skinny boy stared at his new environment. Glass jars containing organic and metal organs floating in green fluid lined the walls. A leather gurney stained with blood upon which lay a mechanized drill sat in the center of the chamber. Dozens of automatons stood motionless against every wall. To Victor, his laboratory was a sanctuary for his most creative and vital experiments. But he could imagine it might seem frightening to a child. The boy's eyes widened in shock when he saw Victor at his workbench, arms splayed open on the table. He ducked behind a nearby crate. You will not learn anything from that box, child, said Victor. But on top of it you will find a bone chisel. Hand it to me, please. A trembling hand reached to the top of the crate and grasped the handle of the rusted metal tool. The chisel slid across the floor to Victor, who picked it up. Thank you, said Victor, who whipped off the instrument and continued his work on his arm. Victor heard the boy's rapid breathing. I am replacing the twisted flexor tendons, <coughs> uh, the broken mechanisms in my wrist, Victor said, reaching into his arm to adjust a bolt. Would you like to watch? The boy peeked his head around the crate. Doesn't it hurt? said the boy. No, Victor said. When one eliminates the anticipation and fear of pain, it becomes entirely bearable. Oh, it also helps that my arm is almost completely mechanized. See for yourself. 
The boy stepped away from the crate and sat across from Victor without a word, eyes fixed on his arm. Victor resumed, welding a new bolt drive onto the tendons beneath his skin. When he had finished, he sealed the flaps of his dermis onto his arm. He drew the beam of light across the seam, cauterizing his flesh and fusing the incision. Why did you do that? The boy asked. Didn't your arm work fine as it was? Do you know what humanity's greatest weakness is, boy? No, said the boy. Humans constantly ignore the endless infinity of possibilities in favor of maintaining the status quo. The victor gave... Victor gave the quote. The boy gave him a blank stare. People fear change, Victor said. They settle with fine when they could have exceptional. Victor walked to his stovetop. He mixed a blend of dark powder and done pour cream into a saucepan, heating it with his laser. Would you like a glass of sweet milk? said Victor. A weakness of mine, but I have always enjoyed the anise flavor. Um, you're not gonna saw off my head and replace it with a metal one? Ah, is that what they think of me now? Victor asked. Pretty much, said the boy. I heard one kid had theirs replaced just because they had a cough. Did you get this information directly? said Victor. No. It was my neighbor Burma's cousin, or uncle, or something like that. Ah, well, in that case, would, would replacing someone's head even get rid of a cough? asked the boy. Now, you are asking the right questions, said Victor. No. I imagine it would not be much of an upgrade. Coughing stems from the lungs, you see. And to your earlier point, I am not going to saw off your head and replace it with the metal one. Unless, of course, you want that and ask for it. No thanks, said the boy. Victor poured the thick liquid into two mugs and passed one to the boy who stared longingly into the hot drink. Victor pour poured it himself. It is not drugged, said Victor, and took a sip from his own mug. The Victor gulped down the sweet milk. Are the others still watching? Said the boy through the stained teeth. Victor glanced through his iridoscope. The three children were still waiting by the front entrance. Indeed they are. Do you wish to give him a scare? Victor said. The boy's eyes lit up and nodded. Victor handed him a sinophone and said, Scream as loud as you can to this. The boy gave an exaggerated, blood-curdling shriek into the sonophone. It echoed along Aberfeld Alley and the other children jumped in terror, quickly scattering to hide. The boy looked at Victor and grinned. I find that fear is more often than not a limitating emotion, said Victor. Tell me. Tell me something that scares you, for example. The Camberons. The Camberons are feared because they project an air of dominance and often the threat of violence. If no one feared them, people would stand up to them. And then, where would their power go? Uh, away. Exactly. Think of how many Cambarons exist compared to how many people live in Zon. Fear is used by the powerful few to control the weak because they understand how fear works. If 
someone can manipulate your emotions, they can control you. I guess that makes sense, but I'm still afraid of them, said the boy. Of course you are. Patterns of fear are carved deep into your very flesh. Steel, however, has no such weakness. Victor retrieved a vial containing minuscule silver beads floating in milky fluid. That is where I may be able to assist, he said. I have developed an augmentation that eliminates fear altogether. I could let you try it out for a short time. How short? The implant will dissolve in 20 minutes. You're sure it's not permanent? It can be. But not this one. You might find that without fear, your friends out there lose their grip. Bullies feed on fear, you see. And without it, they will starve. The boy nursed his drink, considering the offer. After a short moment, he nodded to Victor, who inserted a thin needle into the vial and ejected one of the silver beads into the skin behind his ear. The boy shuddered for a moment, then he smiled. Do you feel your weakness falling away? Victor asked. Oh, yes, said the boy. Victor walked him to the door and twisted a dial to unlock it before waving him out. Remember, you can always return if you wish for a more permanent solution. A wave of fog created a ghostly silhouette around the boy as he emerged from the laboratory. Victor returned to his workbench to watch the experiment through his iridoscope. Emberfield Alley was empty, but as soon as the boy walked out of his... out of his... short very smoky environment, his companions emerged. Where's our souvenir? asked the red-haired boy. Doesn't seem like little Nav has held up to his end of the deal, said the girl. Guess we have to punish him, added the large boy. We did promise him a new head today, after all. Don't you touch me, said Nav. He raised himself to his tallest height. The bully reached for Nas's neck, but Naf turned and punched him square in the face. Blood streamed from the bully's nose. Grab him! The bully screamed, but his companions were no longer interested in grabbing him. Naf stepped towards the bullies. They stepped back. Get away from me, he said. The bullies eyed each other, then turned and ran. Victor closed his irodoscope and returned to his work. He stretched the fingers of his newly repaired arm and tapped them on his desk in pure satisfaction. <laughs>